welcome this is copilot chat masterclass i'm going to cover the paid version of copilot we are going to cover all these topics in logical order as you know i work with customers globally and help them utilize copilot and microsoft platform more effectively these best practices are based on my experience with all these customers and my own learning this video has nine audio languages choose the one you want by clicking on the gear icon at the bottom always use copilot chat in browser version go to copilot.microsoft.com log in using your corporate id and use copilot do not use copilot inside teams why because it's not guaranteed to be updated the browser version will always give you latest features in the chat the left side has all the menu items if you want more space you can click on this button to collapse it when you want it back expand it by clicking on it again the next thing to check is gpt5 button gpt5 was introduced recently so currently you have to click that button to utilize gpt5 going further it will become default and you don't need that button any longer the gpt5 button is now on now i'm going to click on new chat see what happened it's off so remember to switch on the gpt5 button every time you create a new chat copilot and gpt5 may know all topics in the world but it still does not know about one thing that is who are you and what are your preferences so it's a good idea to set custom instructions so go to the top right corner three dots or more options go to settings click on custom instructions it's just a blank text box this is sort of standing instructions given to copilot so any prompt you're going to give to copilot first it is going to apply all these instructions and then it is going to run your prompt so broadly two things you should put here one is a detailed introduction who you are what you do what are your priorities goals specific objectives that's part number one second part is your preferences for example here i have written i prefer tables as output rather than long lists i have also told copilot that whatever may be the response first give me a summary so if the summary itself is not up to the mark i can just change the prompt saves me some time add your own instructions to get better answers copilot memory is a similar concept but copilot picks up useful information and remembers it while you are interacting with it for example here i am asking copilot that i always prefer landscape type of images it says okay i'll remember it it'll tell you that memory updated take the mouse cursor there it'll show you exactly what it has remembered every week or so go and look at the list of memory items and if there's something irrelevant remove it now let's learn when not to use copilot chat that's equally important if you want to do anything related to data analysis directly go to the analyst agent that will give you much more comprehensive and detailed results if you want to do extensive search with thinking go to researcher agent directly and the other important thing is copilot chat it's available in all these apps as well so decide what you want to do and then use copilot in the correct app for example if you want a presentation don't ask copilot chat to create it go to powerpoint open copilot there and then of course it'll do a much better job because copilot in powerpoint knows how to use powerpoint better than any other ai similarly if you want the document as an output go to word and give the prompt in copilot chat you can refer to files but if you have up to five files we want to use and they are already a part of a one drive folder then go to one drive select those files and there is copilot in one drive use that similarly if you want to create a survey or a quiz don't do it in chat go to forms microsoft forms there is copilot it can accept word excel powerpoint and pdf files so now that we are clear about what not to do let's focus on how actually to use copilot chat effectively and efficiently the simplest thing is to type your prompt but one common mistake people are doing is sometimes you want a new paragraph new line and people press enter and that submits the prompt so remember a simple keyboard shortcut 
while typing a prompt if you want a new line then shift enter is what you need to type only when you are ready with the prompt and you want to submit it press enter as soon as you start typing it shows you similar prompts you have given in the past sort of a history and below the history it also shows you recommendations so quickly eyeball them because some of them may be useful and as you keep using copilot more and more is going to have more recommendations for you if it's a long prompt instead of typing you can start dictation remember this is a browser so when i click on this is going to ask you to give permission for microphone now whatever i am speaking will get typed and it's much easier to give longer prompts without the trouble of typing whenever you are doing prompting i strongly recommend you use this prompt coach if you don't see it here go to all agents scroll down you should see prompt coach click on it first time you add is going to give you an add button i have already done that so it's just saying open once you do that it's going to appear in the left panel and because it's very useful it's a good idea to pin it detailed prompt coach video is available have a look at it now let's talk about the plus sign the simplest way to use it is click on add content and search for the file you want this search it's only looking at recently used files if you can't find the file here click on attach cloud files this will search all your files across one drive sharepoint and teams this dialog is quite powerful and most people miss that look at the left side there's a pane which opens so this is the entire list of your one drive files recent files file shared with me by others favorites which i have marked people first and the files they have shared with me sometimes we have file shared during meetings is easier to find them going from the meeting rather than just searching for the file because you may not even remember the file name but you remember the meeting and below we have a list of teams and sharepoint sites you can select multiple files here chat seems to accept up to 20 files if you make a mistake you can always remove a reference explicitly and then give you a prompt while referring to files we have one more option that's this upload button here you can upload a file from local drive when i uploaded a file a copy of the local file is created my strong recommendation is stop using local files and move all your files to one drive teams or sharepoint that's going to give you all the benefits of cloud files and and it'll also make it easier to use them in copilot now let's see how to work on the prompt results this is a simple prompt i am asking you to summarize some proposal submit the prompt let it give the results and then we have lot of options available now before we go ahead and read the results this prompt which you have just submitted is available on the top take the mouse cursor there and you will see many options if you think the prompt needs to change then just click on the edit button and it will be added at the bottom and you can modify it the next thing is i may want to copy the prompt and use it somewhere else the third thing to think of is do i want to share this prompt with someone then click on the link button it will create a link and then you can send it to people if you want to use the exact same prompt later then you can click on save prompt now it will allow you to give it a better name now later on i want it back and that time i'll be in a new chat so what do i do now well i have to click on see more scroll all the way down go to prompt gallery and there i will see my prompt and now in one click i can get my prompt and use it or refine it and use it now let's take another example i am asking it to give me the latest features of copilot now this is going to require and telling me gpt5 integration is the latest but that's as of today whenever microsoft adds a new feature i want to know about it because that's going to make me more efficient but now what does that require me to do i have to remember every few days or a week i have to manually give this prompt and then see is there a new feature now that's something i'm going to forget so why not take this opportunity every time you put a prompt think is it reusable automatically if you have to reuse it on demand save prompt to run it automatically click on scheduled prompt i am saying okay i want to do this weekly not every day only on monday no monday is busy so tuesday early in the morning when i come and start my day i want this to run and currently there seems to be a limit of 15 but at least 15 times it saves me the trouble 
Now I'm going to save it. It's active now. I go to these three dots, top right corner, and there you will see all the scheduled prompts. And you can run it instantly right now or turn it off, but you can't edit them. Now next week on Tuesday, when that prompt has already run, you may not remember that you have asked for it. So how do you know the prompt response is ready? Look at this. My panel is closed, but still there is a red dot. When I open the panel also, you will see a red dot in conversations. Conversations means chat history. So just open it and you will see that prompt which has run in a scheduled manner. And here itself, I got some additional new features. Now let's talk about the response. When you get a response, it will give you references or citations. They are numbered. If you hover, it will give you the link. At the bottom, when I go to that particular reference and hover, it's giving me further prompts related to that reference. It's a SharePoint page. So depending on the reference type, the prompts change. So I'm not saying you have to click on all of them, but it's really a good idea to at least notice them and use the one which is useful. So let's take another example. During Teams meeting, I want to zoom into the shared screen so that I can show some detail. So I asked Copilot how to do it. It's giving me the answer. Now at the bottom, look at these. These are called suggested prompts. And also notice this. It may suggest some additional output or some additional actions. For example, here is asking me, do you want to create a visual guide? So I'm going to ask it to create a one page visual guide. Now it's going to go into image creation mode and create it. So here is our image of the infographic it created for zoom in, zoom out controls. And at the end it is offering, do you also want a PDF version? The next thing to notice are these buttons at the bottom. If you don't like something or something went wrong, it's very important to click on this button. So describe what it is. If it's relevant, include a screenshot, allow it to put the data also. All people in Microsoft who are working on Copilot look at this feedback and they act upon it. The next thing is read aloud. If the response is long and sometimes hearing is better for you than reading a long piece of text, then read aloud is a good option. Zooming shared content in Teams meetings. When someone shares their Windows desktop and you need to zoom in for better visibility, use these keyboard shortcuts on Windows. Zoom in, Alt plus Shift plus plus. The pause button is only at the bottom. There is a share prompt button, but this one is a little different. When I click on this share button, notice what it is saying. I have copied the link and copied the response as well. Go to a new Word document, for example, and just paste it. The prompt is included and the response, which is nicely formatted, is also included. If I want to use the output as it is, I can copy and paste. But if I want to edit it, what do I do? It's called edit in pages. Click on it. Edit what? The response of the current prompt. Where? In pages. Do we have a page? No. So it's going to create a new page. Split the screen on two parts. Left side is the chat right side is the newly created page and now everything can be edited you will see a plus sign here because this is not just an editable page you can add different things here like a table checklist bulleted list code essentially this is a loop page and that's why any loop component you can add here this is editable by me maybe i'm working on a project and my team members should also be able to edit it no problem click on this button create a link, page link, and then go to settings. You can specify people and then they can also be a part of this editing. This is Copilot paid version. You created a loop page based on that. Now you are sharing a link to this page with someone else. That someone else does not need Copilot license because this is a part of loop now. Now let's say later on, I am working on some other prompt and then I realized Oh, this output should also be added to that page which we created. Now, what do I do? I go at the bottom and if I say edit in pages is going to create a new page. I don't want that. I already have the page. That's why we have add to recent page and it will give you a list of pages. And now what happens? I already had that page with zoom in, zoom out thing. Below that, it added new feature output. So I can pull output from multiple chats at different points in time in a single page. Now I want to work on this page in a focused manner. I don't want this to be cluttering the space. That's why there is an expand button. Now this page is full page. It's still a part of Copilot chat, mind you. 
So when I finish this page, I can minimize and then I get my chat back. Now, while we are on the full page, see what's going to happen. I'll have multiple different topics added to the same page. You would want a table of contents. Click on the plus sign and there is table of contents. And the table of content has our first topic, which is zoom in, zoom out in Teams meeting, as well as the second topic, which is what's new in Copilot. Now, while we are with pages, it's possible that we are working on multiple related pages. For example, I'm going to create some course on Microsoft 365 and one page is for one topic. How do I combine them together? And that's what happens when I click on these three dots, add to notebook. Notebook is a collection of files or pages or both. Maximum number of items you can add there is 20. So we started with a chat, got the results, put the results in a page and multiple pages can be added to notebook. Now let's say you've finished creating this page and now you want to create a formal document. Click on this button, click on open word. This is all happening on browser. It'll create a new word document. And if you don't want to edit it on browser, of course, you can open it in desktop. Let's talk about web search. You may not even notice it, but if you go to three dots on the top right or more options, there is web search on or off. By default, it is on. Why would I want to turn it off? So here is an example. I have internal standard operating procedures. I already have access to all those SOPs. I am supposed to follow them. These SOPs are about how to utilize Microsoft platform efficiently. So now I'm going to ask a question. How to sync Teams files to local PC? Web search is on. Now when Copilot is responding, it looks at three places. One is all the data you have access to, plus the general knowledge of the LLM or ChatGPT. And third thing, web search. So now it's going to give me a mix of my SOPs and external guidance as well. In this case, I don't want that because I'm supposed to follow our corporate policies. So that's why I'm going to go to new chat, switch off web search and give exactly the same prompt. So now it found my SOP folder and it's telling me exactly what to do as per company guidelines. For every prompt, consciously think, is web search okay or not okay? And only if it is not okay, remember to switch it off. It's only switched off for the current chat. When I click on new chat, it's automatically turned on. When we do lot of chats, you may want to refer to a previous chat. That is done from here, conversations. It's basically chat history. It only shows you the latest five here, but all the chats are available here. You can search for them. And this goes all the way back to ever since you started using Copilot. Now let's look at some other features quickly. Search is extremely powerful. It searches across OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, images, videos, Power BI reports, and more. And it has Copilot built in. Have a look at this video and it'll transform the way you search. The next thing is notebooks. We have looked at it briefly, but have a look at this video for details. We have another powerful feature for creating images, posters, videos, and more. I have a separate video for that. Lastly, we have apps. You will see all the familiar apps and they will open on browser. Remember to click on all apps and at least eyeball what you have access to. So if you find something useful, click on it and pin it so that in one click you can open that app. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. If yes, then share it with as many people as you can. Give me feedback and also give me ideas for more videos. Do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon as well. So that's it for now. See you soon. Thank you.